Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, we have an... We got an interesting WrestleMania for you this time around. It's a WrestleMania I was actually at. I attended. I bought this shirt there. It's the same shirt CM Punk's wearing to the ring. Um, but before we do that, I have a bit of an oversight in my WrestleMania 28 episode. I completely forgot to talk about the Hall of Fame. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the Hall of Fame for WrestleMania 28 and WrestleMania 29 just right now. Just We'll get it out of the way because I completely forgot to do it for WrestleMania 28. And it was a decent class. You know, we had Edge going in. Edge, very important, very, uh, you know, upsetting that he had to go in. Obviously, uh, he was inducted by Christian, naturally. Uh, we had Mil Mascaris go into the Hall of Fame, uh, inducted by Alberto Del Rio, which is pretty awesome. It, it's weird. Uh, then we have Ron Simmons, inducted by JBL, obviously. Uh, Well-deserved for Ron Simmons. Um uh, just awesome. He had a really good speech, too. Um, we also had Yokozuna inducted posthumously, inducted by uh, the Usos. And uh, we had the Four Horsemen finally going in, which I don't think we really needed to, but I think it was the only way for them to put Arn Anderson in, I guess. I would have just preferred Arn Anderson going in. But, you know, we got the Horsemen. That's fine. And also, former World Heavyweight Champion of the World, Mike Tyson. Uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson! Is in the Hall of Fame now, Celebrity Hall of Fame. He was inducted by DX, naturally. And uh, he still didn't figure out how to crotch chop from the uh, from the little lineup they had on the stage there. But now uh, let's, let's move into a Hall of Fame ceremony that I attended. Yes, I was at this Hall of Fame because it was in the garden. Um, this whole weekend, I did a lot of stuff for WrestleMania 29 because... I threw my buddy Danny's bachelor party for WrestleMania 29. We hit up Access. We hit up the Hall of Fame. We hit up a pre, um, a tailgate at WrestleMania. We hit up WrestleMania itself. It was a great weekend. If WrestleMania ever comes to your town or close enough to your town, I highly recommend that you do as much stuff as humanly possible because it's basically wrestling Comic Con. Also, your wallet will want to kill you and potentially your liver. I it depends on what kind of person you are, but um. So, yeah, the Hall of Fame for WrestleMania 29. I will dare say this may be the most stacked Hall of Fame class they've ever had. I'm going to throw it out there. If you guys disagree with me, that's fine. Come at me, bro. But this one's pretty tough to beat. Mick Foley. Started off right away. Uh, he was inducted by Terry Funk. They had the funny spot with him um, and Chris Jericho with CM Punk as a referee on the stage at Madison Square Garden, so very funny. Bob Backlund getting inducted by Maria Menounos. Uh, Bob Backlund had an insane speech. You have, to, you have to watch it if you've never seen it before. Just absolutely insane. Um, Trish Stratus inducted by Stephanie McMahon. Trish even announced she was pregnant at her Hall of Fame speech and had a giant scroll of women's wrestlers that she had to read out and thank. By the way, watch this Hall of Fame special. Pause it when she does that. There are a lot of really fun Easter egg names hidden on there. Um, we'll, we'll come back to him. Booker T. Booker T was inducted in this Hall of Fame class. He was inducted by Stevie Ray. Booker T had a great speech, too. And um, Donald Trump was also inducted. Um, moving on. Donald Trump, yeah. He was inducted by Vince. You know, fine. But the headliner, the main event of this Hall of Fame, the living legend, Bruno San Martino. Ah, oh, Bruno gave a great speech. We got to see Arnold Schwarzenegger induct him, for Christ's sake. Come on. You got Schwarzenegger. I mean... Wow, that's I'm telling you, this is the best Hall of Fame class they've had. I'm 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 not just saying it because I was there, but I was there, so I'm saying it's pretty good. All right, moving on. Let's get to the card proper, like we do. Um, first of all, I have to. Uh, this is kind of funny because if you looked at the stage, you would think this WrestleMania is in New York. If you watch all the video packages you'd pretty much think this WrestleMania is in New York. It's in New Jersey. I don't know. It's just a thing. It's weird. 
Um, we we just all have to, the only like indication that it's in New Jersey is Chris Christie's there. So I mean, you know, <laughs> it's the Statue of Liberty, it's the Brooklyn Bridge, like it's New York. They want they wanted it to they want a big stadium in New York so badly they can taste it. And apparently Yankee Stadium is not big enough. Or City Field. I don't know. I'd like to see WrestleMania either of those. I think it'd be fun. But anyway, pre-show match for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, this is back when The Miz was using the figure four. So it's weird, but he did beat uh, Wade Barrett by submission to win the IC title. Yeah, uh, Miz has fallen kind of far, unfortunately. But uh, this was on the pre-show. This was on the WWE app on the second screen experience, I believe. This is before the network. And well, trust me, the network networks is next year. They have there's way too much stuff on the network for WrestleMania 30, and I'm not watching all of it. I'm just watching the show. But um the first match proper on the show is the Shield. The Shield opens WrestleMania, and they're up against Randy Orton, Sheamus, and Big Show. Yet another three-man team. They tried to throw against the Shield. Eventually, it, it took evolution to take to um kind of break up the shield basically but um it was a good match nice and fun uh, i had a cool little moment where big show is trying to get tagged in orton hogs the spotlight and gets speared by roman reigns so yeah shield goes over of course as you would expect the shield were dominant um this next match was way better than anyone expected i think mark henry going get going up against ryback now, uh, if, you, if you watch Mayhem Mania, you know, not necessarily the biggest Ryback fan in the world. But this was fun. Um, Mar and Mark Henry actually got a win at WrestleMania, which is nice. I was hoping Mark Henry got this win. And he got the win because Ryback fell while trying to do the shell shock. Kind of a cool finish. Uh, usually, stuff like that doesn't lead to a finish. It's a setup. But Ryback shell shocked him after the match. So, you know, it, it's fine. But Mark Henry got the win. So we're okay with that. Um, then we have for the tag team championships, we have team hell. No, the champions, which, oh, th this match brought back so many good memories of WrestleMania. Um, just because, uh, I, and plus who they're going up against, they're going up against team rocket, team rocket. I mean, all right, you don't know who Team Rocket is. Team Rocket is Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston with AJ Lee um, alongside them. It was great. It was really good. Um, short. It's the shortest match on the card, unfortunately. But um, it, it, like watching pre New Day Biggie Langston is phenomenal. He, he is really, really good. Uh, AJ Lee is just seeing AJ Lee skip to the ring. I miss that. I miss the three of them together because the three of them together, they're awesome. Um, but yeah, so let's let's uh moving on. Uh, well, Team Hell No did defeat them. Did uh did defeat Team Rocket, but uh, Dolph Ziggler had some other things in mind. I was also at the Raw after this WrestleMania where Dolph Ziggler cashed in his money in the bank and won the World Championship. By the way, if you want to see a video of that, go on my personal YouTube. It's on there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, um, it was a fun match. I, I really wish it would have gone longer. But moving on, we have to get a WrestleMania debut. Fun. Done. Go. Remember we had remember we all had to say it like that? It was Fandango versus Chris Jericho. And this is uh Fandango without Summer Ray. This is with the first dancer chick who I like to call Scott Amush because she does the Fandango, Thunderbolts and Lightning, very, very frightening. You know, Galileo, Galileo. You get it. Uh but yeah, Fandango and Chris Jericho had a good match. Chris Jericho put him over for some reason. I still, to this day, I don't think he even knows why he did it. But, yeah, it was fun. It, it introduced us all Fandango. He had a cool entrance with all the dancers. Uh, yeah, it was a good time, though. But now moving on. And I all right, I feel bad because this, this WrestleMania is oddly timed so much so that we actually skipped out on a match I was very excited to see. It was an eight-person 
mixed tag match. You were going to have the Funkadactyls, Tensai and Brodus Clay against Team Road Scholars, Cody and Damian Sandow, and the Bella Twins. I personally wanted to see that match. I was very excited for that match because Team Road Scholars was amazing. But it was scrapped from WrestleMania. And if you actually want to see, uh, I mean, they had the next night on Raw, which, you know, fine. But if you watch the first season of Total Divas, um, the reactions on the Bella's face and the Funkadactyl's face when they found out that their match was getting scrapped, oh, it's it's heartbreaking like because you can tell they were really excited and they're just and they're watching um the del rio swagger match they're watching that go over they're watching taker and punk go over and they're like we're not gonna get our match we're not gonna get our match in because the last three matches all go over 20 minutes they all go over 20 minutes and like i <sighs> I mean, luckily the network, I think, fixes a lot of these problems because they don't have to adhere to a time restriction. But, yeah, I mean, we also didn't have to have a seven-minute concert from Diddy. We didn't. I enjoyed it live there. I enjoyed that because, A, he did a lot of songs I knew, and it was reasonably short. But did we need it at WrestleMania? No, we did not. And we could have cut it, and we could have put that match in. But... Uh, those are the breaks sometimes, and you know I, I think the women turned out okay. They they're they're doing a lot better now. But um, during and we have a lot of video packages for John Cena vs. The Rock. Way too many in my opinion because we'd already fucking seen it before. This is twice in a lifetime, y'all. Twice. Um, but even during a video package, that's when Jack Swagger's entrance happens. Like I've never seen that at a modern WrestleMania where someone doesn't get an entrance. Never seen that. Like, especially, this is a championship match. And Swagger and Zeb, they came out on, like, a military jeep with the We the People flag. Like, it was a cool entrance. We'll get a much cooler entrance in a couple of years. But it was a cool entrance. And they're going up against Alberto Del Rio. And it's really kind of, it's it's odd seeing Zeb Coulter talk like this with Donald Trump being at the same event. I'm just saying it's weird. It's weird. I'm not going to get into it, but oh, it's it's eerie. It's eerie to see where things have come since WrestleMania 29. Anyway, Del Rio and Swagger they have a good match. Uh, Del Rio does get the submission on, though. He does eventually win with the armbar. And his armbar looks so good in this match. The final one he used on Swagger, it looked really, really good. But, you know, this is all... Uh, and everyone at the stadium... we Like, halfway during the match, we were chanting, we want Ziggler. Because, honestly, Swagger didn't really light the world on fire. Del Rio didn't really light the world on fire. We all want Ziggler to cash in at WrestleMania. Because no one had done it at this point. And Ziggler's briefcase, briefcase was getting beat up. Like, it must have been difficult to travel of that thing. But he eventually did cash in the next night on Raw. So, you know, got the cool moment. I got to see that on my 30th birthday. But anyway, um, moving on. We have CM Punk in, in one of the best Undertaker stories to boot. And that's only because, unfortunately, Paul Bearer passed away uh, right around this time. And... Boy, howdy, did they use that angle. Uh, CM Punk with Paul Heyman and the urn of The Undertaker. Like, if you don't remember the build for this, ooh, it's it's controversial to say the least. But hot damn, did it make a fun match uh, with Taker. But guess who wins? Taker. Of course. Come on, it's Taker. Uh, but uh, fun note to pick up on here. CM Punk is actually wearing Undertaker-themed tights. It's very subtle. CM Punk did this a lot, like during during the summer of punk stuff. Like he wore uh, Yankee pinstripe tights in Boston. He did a lot of fun stuff like that. His Undertaker theme tights are amazing. You have to te- you have to at least uh, flip to this match just to check out his gear. It's awesome. But yeah, this is a really good match. Uh, they do a announcer spot, announcer table spot outside. Um, the w- the point where ta- uh, CM Punk has the Anaconda device locked in and Taker just sits up, really cool moment 
they try to do that again with like Taker and Brock again down the line, but this was a really cool moment. I really appreciate it. And Taker got the win because Taker was going to win this match. And 21-0. 21-0. I wonder if he'll get to 22. He doesn't. Um, <laughs> Spoiler alert. But uh, moving on, speaking of that spoiler alert, Brock Lesnar in a no-holds-barred match with Triple H and Shawn Michaels at ringside. Now, this would have been a fun match, but the stipulation was if Triple H lost, he had to retire. Guess who wins? Triple H. Of course he does. Because the end of an era means absolutely nothing when both men come back the same year, the next year at WrestleMania and win their matches. It's a good match. I'm not taking anything away from the match. It's very fun. There's a lot of uh, stuff with the Kimura armbar. Shawn Michaels gets involved. But Triple H just wins because he has to win at this point because they put a stipulation on it that he had to. But, uh, yeah. All right, so moving on. Cena and The Rock for the WWE title. The Rock's the champion at this point. You know, not the call I would have made, not the call a lot of us would have made, but... He does have a much better match here with The Rock, uh, with with John Cena than they had the, the year before. I will say that it was a much it was a much better match, way too long, way 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 too long. I probably could have shaved about six minutes off this match and enjoyed it a lot more because this match is almost a half hour. So yeah, uh, way too long of a match. Lot of fa- lot of finisher kickouts, which is just unfortunate and. It doesn't work as well. Like if I want to see that, I'll go ROH. I'll go ROH. I will. Like, but I think there are like f- three or four rock bottoms. Like, come on, come on, buddy. That's ridiculous. But John Cena got the win. He got his win back from the Rock. Uh, hopefully, we'll never see you thrice in a lifetime. But uh, then there was a little cool moment where um, Cena went to. S- Cena left, so he so he gave Rock the ring. Then they showed the cameras, wa- Rock walking up, and Cena was waiting there, and they saluted each other, and they saluted the crowd. So kind of a cool moment at the end there. But, again, way too long of a match. Still would have liked to see that eight-person intergender match. That's just me. All right, um, so that's pretty much it for WrestleMania 29. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they come back to MetLife Stadium at one point. It almost started raining. We were all very concerned about that. It rained a little bit, but then it stopped. So we are very lucky when it came to that because none of us brought ponchos. Uh, but, yeah, so it, it, was a, it was a good WrestleMania overall. I don't know if it's one of the better ones in the 20s since we're, since now we're going to be moving to WrestleMania 30. But, uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was a decent one. All right, so if you have any questions about WrestleMania 29, uh, if you have any questions about Access, because I did go to Access. I saw Linda McMahon there, took a picture of 3MB. It was fun. Access is great. Even if you can't afford WrestleMania tickets, Access is much cheaper, and you can have a lot of fun. You can get some cool stuff done there. Um, but, yeah, hit me up at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in this YouTube. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Hit the hashtag MM. And um, we're going to WrestleMania 30. We're going to the first... WrestleMania of the WWE Network, you guys. We're in the home stretch. All right. So, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias with Mike.